All right, Shalom, Shalom. This is Ozma Wah once again with another quick lesson. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem of Kakadash. And that's all praise to the Heavenly Father in His, non, in his Son's name, who the world in calls Jesus Christ, and, uh, and also the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, uh, none of these um, lessons or uh, going out there on the street corners, it wouldn't be possible without the Holy Spirit because um, he's the one who equips his disciples, um, you know, with the uh, with the knowledge and the heart to, um, you know, to go into these things. Right. So. Um, so today I want to go into the law of um, water or separate uh, separate. Uh, it's a lot water of separation separation. I'm sorry. Water is separation. Right. Um, and within the law, you'll find as we read that it mirrors the baptism that we are baptized in uh, through Hamashiach Yahweh Shah. All right. So I guess you can say this was the uh, so-called Old Testament baptism, you know, um, even though there's no such thing as the Old Testament. Um, you know, so so let's take a look at this law real quick. And uh, we're, after we read it, we're going to uh, glean a spiritual application to it because we understand uh, that the law has a duality. It has a, it has a spirit of duality within it. Um, Romans chapter 7 and 14. Let me open up with that real quick. Let's go to Romans 7 and 14. Romans. Yeah, so this is the book of Romans chapter 7 and 14. He says, for we know that the law is spiritual, see, but I'm carnal, so it understands. So, so the law itself, you know, it was manifested into uh, physical things such as uh, you can't, um, you know, wear fabrics of, uh, or wear clothing of mixed fabrics, or you can't uh, sow two different types of seeds, um, you know what I'm saying, in the, in the soil uh, right next to each other or whatnot. Uh, you can't, uh, basically have an ox and a, and a donkey yoked together. Well, all these things were none other than, um, uh, of course, those were manifested out in the spiritual, I mean, in the physical, but, um, you know, they have a, a spiritual application that you can uh, glean from it, you know? So uh, so as we go in Numbers chapter 19, uh, it should be, Lord willing, it will be edifying and it will be made clear that, um, that the water separate, uh, Separation. I don't know why I keep saying separation, but water separation uh, definitely has a spiritual message behind it as well. All right, so let's start from the top. So this is Romans chapter nineteen, verse one. It says, and Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, "This is the ordinance uh, of the law which Yahweh have commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot." Wherein is no blemish. Let me scroll down here. Yeah, wherein is no blemish, and upon which uh, never came yoke. And you shall give her unto Eleazar the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. And Eleazar the priest shall take of her blood with his finger and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times and one shall burn the heifer in his sight her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn All right and um and here's the key points coming down here and the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water and afterward he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the even. Let me scroll down here so y'all can see it because I'm reading out my Bible. Verse eight, and he, and he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp. Uh, it's a lot, and lay them up without the camp in a clean place and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separate separation it is a purification for sin right I'm gonna read that part again for a water of separation it is a purification for sin 
And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even, and it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that sojourneth among them for a statue forever. And let's see, I'll keep reading till we get to 13. And it says, <clears throat> he that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with, with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever toucheth the dead body of any man that is dead and purifies not himself, defileth the tabernacle of Yahweh, and that that soul sh shall be cut off from Israel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him, he shall not, I mean, it's a lot, he shall be unclean, his uncleanliness is yet upon him, right? Now, and it continues all the way down to verse 22, um, and Lord willing through the spirit, uh, perhaps if you put his back up on my spirit to uh, do a part two to it, I will, more than likely we will, but for the, uh, but for the sake of this recording, we'll just, um, we'll just put emphasis upon the first 13 verses. Um, so yeah. So with that, all right, we're going to break it down, Lord willing, through the spirit. Uh, it's not going to take long. So if we understand that the law is spiritual, all right, and let's go here to John chapter five. We'll start at verse 39. Sorry, it's taking a second. There we go. This is the book of John, chapter 5 and 39. This is red letter. So this is uh, how it shall speaking. He says, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. So yeah, all these scriptures in here, man. All right? From the so-called Old Testament all the way down to the book of Revelation. These are these scriptures, they are testifying of Yahweh Shah. Every single last one of them, man. Why? Because in Psalms 40 and 7, he says, lo, I come in the volume of the book, All right? This whole book, you know, it, well, Yahweh shot embodies this whole book, man. All right, now let's go down to verse 46. It says, for had you believed Moses, yeah, because we're reading what Moses had wrote right there in the book of Numbers, All right? He says, for had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me, All right? For Moses wrote of him. What did Moses write? Moses wrote the law, and we was just in particular, reading about the law i was all this stuff popping up <clears throat> we we're reading about the law of separation right the law of separation right so we understand that moses wrote that and that is none other than uh, a foreshadowing a pointing to yahweh shah right when you look at it in a spiritual sense right the law is spiritual and uh and i quoted it but let's let's go there real quick psalms 47 we go there quite often <clears throat> This book of Psalms 47, he says, Then said I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me. You see, in the volume of the book, it is written of Yahweh Shah, right? So, um, so the law of separation or the water of separation, once again, is none other than um, the modern day baptism that Yahweh Shah baptizes us with, right? Through the spirit, through the spirit, he baptizes us purging our minds, right? As a matter of fact, yeah, let's go ahead and get that. We'll start at uh, Hebrews chapter nine from the top. All right, and it says this. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Yeah, we was, just, we was just reading about that in Numbers chapter 19, all right? Things involving the first covenant and uh, the ordinances of divine service, all right? Talking about things that would happen or that took place within the earthly tabernacle, within the earthly sanctuary. Verse two, it says, for there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and shoe bread, which is called the sanctuary. So yeah, this was the, this was the, uh, this was the first compartment, right? And <clears throat> right here is gonna tell you about the second compartment. It says, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holies of all, all right, and this is where the intercession uh, came into play, where the high priest will go in there once a year for, uh, in the Day of Atonement. All right, uh, verse four says, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid 
roundabout with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant, it says, and over it the cherubim's glory shadowing the mercy seat, <clears throat> which we cannot now speak particularly. Verse 6, it says, now when these things were there ordained, the priest went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. Yeah, because these this is what was happening basically, basically on a daily basis, you know, uh, but only once a year. Well, it's about to explain right here, verse 7. But into the second, so the second compartment, the holiest of holies, right, the holy of holies, also known as the most holy of all. Uh, it says, but into the second went the high priest alone once every year, right? And what, what is that? That's the Day of Atonement. Not without blood, which he offered for himself, and for the errors of the people. Verse 8, it says this. It says, the Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holies of all was not yet made manifest, right? It was not made, man made manifest while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present in which were, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, let's let's focus upon this part right here. As pertaining to the conscience, right? So although the priest would uh, offer that sacrifice um, for the sins of himself and also for the sins of Israel, um, it said it couldn't make him perfect, right? Although you know he was putting away uh, the filth of the flesh, you know, with the water separation, right? Uh, all the all the divine ordinances and, and rituals. Right. But as pertaining to the conscience, right, it wouldn't make that person perfect. Right. That's why uh, Yahweh said that uh, I mean, not Yahweh, but Yahweh in the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter one, in the first chapter, it talked about how, um, how he started uh, detesting and loathing the sacrifices. Right. Because they were they were they were doing the, the ritualistic aspects or the, uh, yeah, the ritualistic aspects to it. Right. Sacrificing the animal, you know what I'm saying, offer up the sin, incense and so on and so on, but their hearts weren't right. That's why he says, I desire mercy and not sacrifice uh, in the book of, um, what was that? Hosea 6 and 6? I believe it was Hosea 6 and 6. Uh, but uh, verse 10, it says this. He says, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings. You see that? Diverse washings. This is going into the water separ uh, separation, right? Diverse washings. Because when that person was unclean, um, that priest would sprinkle that that water upon that upon that person that was unclean, whether he came in contact with a dead body, you know, um, or whether he. Um, or when you read verses uh, fourteen down twenty two, talks about uh, if uh, if a person went inside the home of a person that had died, you know. So this is all dealing with the diverse washings and carnal ordinances. You see these fleshly ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. Now, when is that? In the time of reformation, that's when we get into the new covenant, right? He says, but Christ become, being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes of a heifer, you see that, All right? Because we were just reading, and we're about we're going to read it again with a clear understanding after we read uh, Hebrews. All right, it says, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean. Well, you're supposed to offer up that that red heifer without uh, without spot, in uh, according to Numbers chapter 19, right? In order to uh, be sprinkled with that water to become clean. He says, for the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh. So he says, yeah, if if that if that cleanses your flesh, he says this in uh, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God, purge your conscience. You see that? That's the key point. Purge your conscience. This is all centered around your conscience, man. What does it say up here? Let's read Hebrews 9 and 9 again, which was a figure for the time then, right? Present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not 
make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience. You see, so you still weren't perfect according to the conscience, even though you were doing what the law has said, right? But you were still dead in your sin. All right, now let's go back down here to verse, uh, where's we at? Yeah, verse 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to God? Yeah, he was that sacrifice. In a sense, he was that heifer that that cleansed, that uh that made you clean from the from the defile, from the defilement of the dead. All right. And we'll we'll get there. We'll bring it down some precepts. He says, uh, how much more shall the blood of my shop, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience, purge your conscience from dead works. See that dead works to serve the living God. Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. All right. Because when you come in contact with the dead, you got to be cleansed with that water of separation. And that water separation is none other than the blood of Yahweh Shah, man. Right, and we're going to be sprinkled with that with that water, even before we get into the kingdom, and we'll we'll get there with some prophecies uh, in the book of Ezekiel real quick, right? So, um, so yeah, let's let's go back to Numbers chapter nineteen and read it with a uh, better understanding. Um, <clears throat> after reading Hebrews, so this is uh, Numbers chapter nineteen from the top again, and it says, "My bad." Yeah, it says and. Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of the law which Yahweh had commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring thee a red heifer without spot. What did he say in Hebrews 9 and 14? He says, How much more shall the blood of Hamashiach, who through eternal spirit, offer himself without spot? You see, without spot. Go back to Numbers. You say, this is the ordinance of the law which Yahweh had commanded, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, that they should bring the heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish. Yeah, because Hamashiach, Yahweh shot, he had no blemish in him, man. No sin, no guile was found in his mouth, nor his words. He says, and upon which uh, never came, yoke. All right, now let's go to uh, First Peter real quick. First Peter 1. <clears throat> First Peter 1, 19. All right, it says, but with the precious blood of Hamashiach, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. You see that? Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest, right? Meaning made known, right? Brought out into the open. In these last times for you, who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God, seeing you have purified your souls. You see, purify your souls. We're talking about the water of separation. The water of separation purifies you. It makes an unclean person clean, right? And how is this possible? All through the uh, all through the precious blood of Hamashiach Yahweh right? He was that spotless lamb without blemish. He was that uh, he was that spotless sacrifice, right? In numbers, it was a it was a heifer, right? It was a it was a, a calf, right? But regardless, it was a sacrifice, which was Christ. He was the Lamb. He says, "Seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently, uh, being born again, being born again, all right? Not of corruptible seed." but of incorruptible by the word, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Yes, yeah, so let's go back to Numbers 19. Uh, verse three, it says, and you shall give her, speaking of that heifer, you shall give her unto Eliezer the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, that means outside the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. Yeah, this was Yahweh shall getting slayed, man. All right, this was him offering up his, his body as a living sacrifice. Right. Well, as a sacrifice, because he, he got slaughtered. Right. He got he was killed. Verse four, he says, and Eli, Eli, Eliezer, the priest shall take of her blood with his finger 
and sprinkle of her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. That's the number of completion, right? So we was complete through Yahweh Shah's sacrifice, right? He says, and one shall burn the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her dung shall he burn. So this is just talking about the, the, um, the, this is the, um, this is a, in sacrifice itself. This is the killing of the sacrifice, right? This is just a mechanism of how this, how this was done. Of course, Christ wasn't set on fire or anything, right? But this is going into, when you look at a spiritual lens, it's just going into how he was put to death, just how this heifer was. Verse six, it says this, and the priest shall take cedar wood, pay attention, cedar wood, hyssop, and scarlet, and cast it into the midst of the burning heifer, right? Right, the midst of the burning heifer, right? So she was set on fire. That was just a mechanism of her death, right? Now, it says, and the priest shall take cedar wood, right? Now, I'm not going out there on a limb, say what type of wood that was, how I was hung upon, but regardless, it was wood, right? And hyssop, well, what if the... Um, what the Romans put in Yahushua's hand, right? Before sacrificing him. They put a reed in his hand. Let's get that real quick. Matthew 27. Come on. Matthew 27. And we'll start a verse. Let's see. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, dang, let's get this. Um, verse 28 says, and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe, a scarlet robe. Now, if you go to here in Numbers 19 and 6, it says, and the priest shall take cedar wood. All right, if you look at that in spiritual sense, that's the cross, all right? <laughs> and his son, we're about to get that. And scarlet, right? And scarlet, they put on a scarlet robe on Yahweh Shah, man. Right. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put in his head, they put upon his head and a reed in his hand. That's none other than the hyssop, man. All right. Because the hyssop, it's, it comes from a branch. Right. <laughs> and that's what a reed is. And they and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, hell, king of the Jews. Right. Now let's go back to Numbers 19. All right. It says, then the priest shall wash his clothes. Let me skip down here. All right. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe water in his flesh. All right. And afterward, he shall come into the camp and the priest shall be unclean until the even. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the even. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without, without the camp. That means outside the camp in a clean place. And it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel. For it is water of separation. It is purification for sin. All right? All right? Simply means that this water separ separation, that's where you get the word holy from. It means separate. All right? So this is holy water. All right? This is what we are baptized in uh, through, this, through, the, uh, through the death of Yahweh Shah. This is what he baptizes us in once his elect, all right? Once his elect uh, comes into his baptism. All right, verse 10, he says, and he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the even, and it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that shall join it among them for his statue forever. And it says, uh, and he that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. All right. Uh, so this is this is picking back up on well, this is uh, going into the ordinance about the dead bodies. Right, he shall purify himself with it on the third day, and on the seventh day he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day he shall not be clean. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purify not himself, defileth the tabernacle of Yahweh. Now, we was at one point dead, right? Let's go to he Ephesians. Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 and 1, and you hath he quickened, all right? So we were born again, all right? We were brought back to life who were dead in trespasses and sins, right? 
because this is a water separate separation it is a purification for sin right so once you are brought back to life or well, when you were defiled being dead he had to sprinkle you with clean water right and of course we weren't we're not like the christian church over here right to where you literally get dipped into some water right that was for a season that was for a time that was john's baptism right and uh and like i said maybe on part two we'll we'll do a continuation about um you know uh the difference between your house baptism and john's baptism right but for now we're uh we're gonna look at this real quick let's go to um first peter 3 and 21 and it says the light figure yeah the light figure we're into even baptism right baptism which involves water right but this isn't figurative i mean um uh, actual water this is uh spiritual water that we're getting baptized into does also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh right like water separation all right that we're reading about in numbers 19 but the answer of a good conscience toward god that's what hebrews was talking about all right he says the answer of a good conscience towards god by the resurrection of hamashach yahweh right and it's all because of him because he was that sacrifice right and now we are made clean through his blood all right and let's go to uh ephesians 5 and 26 and it says that he might sanctify which simply means to set it aside or to separate right the water separate separation that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, right? By the word. And of course, that word is none other than Yahweh Shah. All right. And we'll go here to uh 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. He says, And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, which means set aside but ye are justified in the name of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, and by the spirit of our God, all right? So this is how all this is possible, man, right? Back then, you know, of course, uh, like Hebrews was talking about, they were divine, um, uh, carnal, or, or earthly. Uh, let me pull that back up again. Hebrews 9. It says, uh, yeah, then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service in a worldly sanctuary. Yeah, these were ordinances of divine services that was pertaining to uh, our sanctuary when it was still standing or our tabernacle when it was still standing, man. All right. But now we're being ushered into a new covenant. All right. And even before we get ushered into the new covenant, right, right before we get into the kingdom, Yahweh Shai himself is going to still sprinkle that clean water upon us. All right. Let me get that real quick. Well, first, let me go back to Numbers 19. And I'm going to read this point real quick. Verse 13 again it says, Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purified not himself, defiled the tabernacle of Yahweh, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. So when you go here to the book of Baruch, book of Baruch 3, we'll start at verse 10. It says, how happened to Israel that, that thou art in thy enemy's land? Yeah, so this is pertaining to us today. We are in our enemy's land, that you are waxing old in a strange country, that thou art defiled with the dead. So if you defile with the dead, what has to happen? Right? Because we understand his laws does not change. All right. Well, that means we've got to be sprinkled. Right, if, we, if you want to be clean, all right, you got to be sprinkled with that water separation. You got to be baptized, right? He says that thou art counted with them that go down to the grave. So, yeah, you're counted with those people that's in the dead. That's, that's dead. How did that happen? Why are we in our enemy's land? And we are counted with them that's down to the grave. The man that, Proverbs 21 and 16. The man that wanted out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So when Yahweh Shai had called you out from amongst them to be ye separate, like 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, 
you got to be separate where well, you're you made separate by the water separation all right so let's go <clears throat> let's go down here real quick let's go back to numbers because he says he says something important he says whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purified not himself the foul of the tabernacle of yahweh and that soul shall be cut off from israel because the water separation was not sprinkled upon him right so that's why Ezekiel, when we go to the book of Ezekiel real quick. Ezekiel 36. And we'll start at verse 24. And it says this. It says, for I will take you from among the heathen. And this is kingdom, con well, not kingdom connotation. Was well, talking about once we get into the kingdom, but this is upon his arrival um, uh, the second time to gather us right he says for when i will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all the countries and will bring you into your own land right that hasn't happened yet which but it's going to happen pretty soon he says then i will sprinkle clean water upon you you see so this ordinance is still <laughs> in effect right because this has not happened yet i'm going to show you what first and foremost this law has not changed and because we are taken out of our enemy's land when we were counted with them that went down to the grave, which thus by default made us defiled, and we ourselves were at one point dead, right? <laughs> That's why he's got to sprinkle us with that clean water. He says, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. And a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you and take away the stony heart out of your flesh um, and I will give you a heart of flesh and will put my spirit within you and cause you, right? You go into that word cause, it literally means to make. So I will make you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and you shall do them. So this was before we get into the new covenant, which is what that, that new heart is about. He's still going to sprinkle us with that clean water. Why? Because you can't go into the tabernacle, right? <laughs> of Yahweh if you have not been cleansed, man. All right. So, um, so yeah, man. So that was basically all I wanted to bring out from the first uh, 13 verses uh, of Numbers chapter 19, 13. Um, basically going over to how the water separation uh, is none other than the, uh, than the baptism, right? And we're still going to be sprinkled with that clean water uh, upon the arrival of the kingdom. So, yeah, I hope this uh, lesson was edifying. Till next time, Shalom.